Welcome back, beloved, to another episode. We thank God for teaching us His Word to open our minds. In the last episode, I was talking about how important is it to place your life under the shepherd who is called by God, who cares for you. So, you have seen that he is the one who will help you and watch over your soul so that you will not fall a victim to demonic attacks. Somebody will ask me, but pastor, how do I know? How do I know the good one? How do I know the good shepherd so that I follow him? You see, first of all, you can know them by the descriptions I, I did concerning the good ones. When you follow the description of the good ones, you can easily make out the bad ones. So that is the first one. That's the first step to know the bad ones. If you want to know the bad ones, check out the good ones. Simple. You compare the bad with the good, then you know the bad ones. Furthermore, let me take my time today and also help you some small tidbits as to how to find a good shepherd. Number one, pray before you visit any church. Pray. Pray about it. Sometimes we make mistakes and when we want to go to church, we just follow some people. We may see them on TV or we, we may be invited by someone, but we fail to pray. It is very important to pray. Pray about me. Pray about me. I will say that. Pray about me too. So that you know where I'm coming from. So anytime you are invited to church, do your best to pray about the pastor you are going to visit. You see, it could be that you may be one of the demonic pastors and the time, and, and if you enter the church, you may have entered a wrong territory. So pray about every shepherd before you visit his church. That's the first thing. Okay, number two. When you visit the church, Check out the word that comes out of his mouth. Check out if he's preaching or not. Because John chapter 3 verse 34 says, The one who is called by God preaches the word of God. If you say you are called by God, if he says, is a pastor, is called by God, then he should preach about God. You see, you cannot tell me you are called by God, but you don't talk about him. It is also interesting that many of the churches today are hijacked by false prophets and they hardly preach the word of God. So if you go there, sit down, and see how he expounds, he divides the word and preaches the word and see whether he's trying to talk to you, to teach you about the God he is saying has called him. So find out if he's talking to you about his God. If he is convincing you as to how to serve God and live right for him and enter the kingdom. Do your best to check that. Because if you go there and it's not about preaching, please, it may be a wrong territory. Always go there and check how the pastor preaches. It is very interesting that most of today's false prophets cannot preach. <laughs> they don't know the word. Some of them even say that they have, uh, they have prayed, that they, have, they have preached a lot about the word, and they don't know what the word of God did for them. Did you hear that? We have been preaching, preaching, preaching about the word. 
And I don't know what the word did for me, did for us. So put the word somewhere. We are going to prophesy. <laughs> that is very interesting. Uh, you say you are a man of God. And you don't have any regard for the word of God. God himself said, I have magnified my word more than my name. The word is magnified more than the name. So if you go to any church, what should take preeminence there should be the word of God. Because, it's, because it is by the word that you live to be holy. It is by the word that you understand this world. It is by the word that you know about demons. So if you go to any church and the man of God is not preaching, and does not know how to divide the word of God, there is something wrong. There is something wrong. Because the one who is called, according to the word of God, she preached the word. It's not about anything else. It's about the word. The word should come first, before the power that I talk about. The casting out demons comes later. So first, look out for the word. So that is the second thing you should check out. The third thing that you should look at, you should look for, is also that the one who is leading the church is not a prophet. Always people don't understand that when you say it is a church, the, a church is not led by a prophet. Except that he has a pastoral gift as well. I have all the fivefold ministries. Everybody who knows me knows that I operate in all the five. Except the pastor is like me. Or has also a pastoral gift. Then he can pastor. But if he is only a prophet. Only a prophet. He cannot lead a church. Because it will only tend to be prophecy. 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 So all that they know is a one interesting quotation. They all, all that they talk about is son of man, prophesy. That's all they know. If you are a prophet, you cannot lead a church. Let me ask you a question. If I went to school as a medical doctor and I studied only about the eye, I specialized on the eye and I opened uh, maybe a hospital or a clinic, Let's say a hospital. I, I, I put up a building. Can I write in front of the building, this is a hospital? No. It will be called the eye clinic or the eye center because I only specialized on the eye. But if someone is a general practitioner who can take care of people with all sorts of medical situations, then the person can say, this place is called a hospital. They treat all sorts of diseases and handle all sorts of medical cases. So it is with church. If the man says he is only a prophet, don't go there. Because it will tend to be prophecy, prophecy. I saw this, I saw that. I saw this, I saw that. And that is not how we train church people. We train church people in every area of the word of God so that the whole counsel of God is manifested in their lives. So don't sit under the feet of a prophet. Today, many people have no understanding of the church structure. It is wrong. The one who should lead the church is called a pastor or the pastor. He is the one. He is the one in charge. Because they, they want to find money, all the false prophets have established churches. And what is it even interesting? Some of them have interesting names. Eh? Some of them are very interesting church names. It tells you that all that they are doing there is about prophecy. And that is not how a church should be. So don't sit under a prophet. He doesn't know how to pastor people. Pastoral heart is different. So that is the next thing you should notice. 
The next thing I want to talk about is that the place should not be a marketplace. You went to church. You didn't go to a marketplace. You went to church but not to a marketplace. What do I mean by marketplace? The Lord Jesus was pissed off. He became very angry with people who were selling in the church, doing business, making money in the church. He whipped them. He got very angry. Whipped them and said, this house shall become the house of prayer for all nations. It is a place people go to seek the face of God. It is not where you go for people to make use of you, to make profit out of you. So if you go to any church that things are being sold, today they make profits in the church. It's business. There is a shop outside the church that the, the false prophet who even does not understand the church structure is selling oil. Wherever you go and things are being sold, go and buy oil. First, you buy oil. Number two, some of them are even told to buy one box of oil. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with one box of oil? That is wrong. Handkerchief, calendars, armbands, uh, water, all sorts of things. If you be in that territory, you need to understand that you have entered a wrong place. Please leave. That place is not for you. So you should understand. In church, nothing should be sold there. When you go to the church of God, Bible is the only thing you should see. The Bible. If the church has a restaurant that serves people, it should be after the church. That you can buy something and refresh yourself. It should be after the church. The place of God should not be a place where people take advantage of people. That is another sign that the place is wrong. Now, another thing to let you know a good shepherd is in John chapter 10, verse 14. This one, let's read. Let me read this one. When the Lord said, the Lord Jesus was speaking here. He said, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I am known by my own. In the other words, I know the sheep very well. And they also know me. Go to a church where the pastor can develop a very good relationship with you. A very good relationship. That is what it means by knowing the sheep. And you also know it. It means you, you, you be in a church where you have a very good personal, personal relationship with the shepherd. Because every sheep can get access to the shepherd. Every sheep can easily get access. It is very interesting that sometimes if you rear animals, they know you so well that some of them can, can eat from your hand. Some of them can eat from your hand. They can come close to where you sit. That is what I'm talking about. So if you are looking for a good shepherd, it should be someone who knows you very well. The church could be big, very big church, as we have big churches. But I do my best to know the names of regular people. If I come into contact with you, the first day you come to my church and I know you, I will never forget your name. Why? Because I will pray for you at night. So go to a church where the pastor knows your name. I pray mentioning the names of my church people. That's what I do. I do understand pastoral duties very well. So I, I take notice of my sheep 
I know them by their names. I know what they are going through so that I can pray for them. You see, I know what they go through because they come to me and they share their, their life with me. That is how a good shepherd should be. You can have access to your pastor. If, if, you, if you belong to a church where the pastor makes things difficult for you to see him, it is a wrong signal that he is not a good pastor. Some of them preach and before you open your eyes, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. Some of them even have their cars started outside. The engine is running. So afterwards, he vanishes into thin air. This is not a good pastor. Everyone who knows me knows that if I finish preaching, I sit down for some time. Talk to people. Some people have issues. They want to discuss with you. I sit down, share their concerns so that I will know how to pray for them. A good shepherd has a good contact with the sheep. So if you go to church and it makes it difficult, some of them after church, they say, you cannot see the pastor on Sunday. What if I have a problem on Sunday? What do I do? I have a problem. He's my shepherd. I should talk to him. Then, then the bodyguard will say, no, you cannot talk to pastor today. You have to go. You see, that is wrong. If it makes it difficult for you to see him by surrounding himself with bodyguards, it is a wrong signal that he is not a good shepherd. He doesn't care of you. He is only afraid of some of his secret dealings. But if you are genuine and you have not offended anyone, you let people come and see you. So that is another signal. Go to a place where it is not difficult to talk to your pastor at all. I don't sleep with my phone off. I don't do that. They can call me anytime because I have good relationship with the people. They may have problems. They may have, they may have nightly attacks. And they have to talk to someone. If it's very important, they talk to me. If it's less hours, they can talk to the, the, the junior pastors or the elders. That is how a good shepherd should be. It shouldn't make it difficult with too many appointments. That he has too many appointments. That he has made too much or too many appointments that you cannot see him. That is also not good. It should be easy for you to talk to your pastor. Then you can see that, oh, I have a pastor. If I, I can call him. If I have a problem, I can go to his office and, and discuss my problem so that he can pray for me. We watch over their souls. So why should I make it difficult for somebody I'm watching over to see me? Come to think of it. Does it make sense to you? No. So that is another thing you should check out. The next thing is that check his fruit. Go into his personal life. When you go there, find out. And you can, you can know them by their fruits. As the Lord Jesus himself said. By their fruits you shall know them. So, some of them say, never follow a pastor. Never sit under a pastor who says, listen to what I'm saying, but don't do what I do. That, that is nonsensical. Paul said, the church should emulate him just as he has also imitated Christ. So, I am imitating Christ who called me. And the church is also imitating me. That is how it should be. So if you tell me as the leader that you only preach and what you do doesn't matter. It matters. Listen, I always put it this way. If you cut the head off, the body is useless. The body is useless. It's just like a snake. If you cut the head of a snake off, the rest is useless. So I came to church. The one who is leading me is very important. Some ignorant people say, I'm only serving my God and I don't care the one who is leading me. May I went to serve my God. God is spirit. He uses human beings. So the one who is the channel 
is very important. It's very important. So find out the one who is talking. If he is holy by himself, he should be holy himself for him to live what he is preaching. He should practice what he preaches. If you see these things, he should tell you that you have been to a demonic territory. Because all that is happening there cannot bring you into heaven. Check it out. And don't run away from such a place. You shouldn't stay at a place where the things you see, these things I've talked about, cannot help you grow spiritually and be in heaven. Run away. The, ne the last thing I want to ask you is a question is that have you ever seen somebody who is in a hospital have you ever seen that before? Somebody who is in a hospital and the, 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 the medication there cannot heal him or cannot heal him. Then he will still be admitted there. Have you seen it before? He will leave and go to the next hospital. He, he will go to the better one where he can be taken care of properly. So if you are in a church and you know that what is happening there it's not helping you. will not take you to heaven. It's better you think. The second thing is, have you ever seen a student who has been in a school where the tutorials cannot help you pass your exam? Have you seen it before? Definitely not. You have to search for a school, the better one, that can help you pass the exam. You went to the school to be taught to pass your exam. You didn't go there to make fun. Likewise, if you went to church, and I keep saying, and all that is happening there cannot bring you into the presence of God. What is happening there is useless. So check these things. Be in a church. Don't go at the place where they are only solving problems. That will not benefit you. The Lord is coming soon. He is coming for his holy, for his holy church. Please, be aware and follow the shepherd who cares for you, who can teach you holy, who can teach you holiness, teach you how to live holy so that when the Lord Jesus appears in the sky, you can also be with him. That is all that church is about. May God help you. I hope your eyes are open today too. He sent me here to talk to you so that you can live holy, please him, and enter the kingdom of God. Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. I hate that place. I love you. I want us to enter the kingdom of heaven and be with God eternally. God bless you. I'll handle the next things next time. God bless you. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.